Well, friends, it's good to have you joining with us again today. I just want to share a simple thought with you from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse number 30. And some of you will be familiar with these words already. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse number 30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said in thee that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, be it far from me, for them that honour me I will honour, and them that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. And just those words, that little phrase towards the end of the verse, where God, Jehovah, the God of Israel says, them that honour me I will honour. Them that honour me I will honour. And if it's the purpose of the child of God, the Christian, to honour the Lord, to seek first the kingdom of God, to put Christ first above ourselves and our own interests, that desire and that purpose of heart will always be tested. Anytime you read about a child of God in scripture or even in history that did something worthwhile for God and sought to honour God and knew the blessing of God, their faith, their trust, their obedience, their submission and their surrender was always, always tested. You think of Daniel and his three friends carried off into Babylon and their purpose to honour God was tested. So it was with Abraham when he was called to offer Isaac up and he was going forward in obedience. That obedience was tested. In 1924, a young candidate for the Presbyterian Church in Scotland was going to the Olympics. His name was Eric Little. Many of you know something of the story of Eric Little and in part his stories told in the movie Chariots of Fire. 1924, Eric Little was a candidate for the Ministry of the Church of Scotland. He was a godly young man. He was studying with theological friends. He had applied to run the 100 metres in the 1924 Olympic Games in Paris. And yet a number of months before going to Paris, he discovered that the race that he was to participate in, the 100 metre sprint, was scheduled to take place on a Sunday, on the Lord's Day. He felt that it would not be to the glory of God or to the honour of God if he was to compete on a Sunday. He felt it would compromise his testimony. He felt it would be disobedience. And he wanted to uphold the fourth commandment and put the Lord first and honour the Lord and honour the Lord's Day. So before going to the Olympics, quite often with his theological students, after their evening meal, they would meet together for conversation and for discussion. But for a number of months after the evening meal, Eric Little would excuse himself and disappear for a number of hours. And nobody knew where he was or what he was doing. He would return later on in the evening, tired, weary and spent, and just go to his room, have his devotions and retire for the evening. But whenever the Olympic Games took place in 1924, all of his friends discovered what Eric Little had been doing. He'd been practicing his running. He'd been practicing for the 400 meters. And so instead of competing on the Lord's Day for the 100 meters, he competed in the 400 meter race, which took place on another day of the week. Not only did he win the gold medal, but he also broke standing records. And God honored him as Eric had sought to honour the Lord. But not so much even in that field. But whenever Eric graduated and was ordained, he became a missionary to China and did a great work for Jesus Christ. And that is something that Hollywood or the world often does not take note of. What Eric Little did after the 1924 Olympic Games. Against all odds, he won the 400 metres. And against all human reason, he he refused to participate on the Lord's day, but God honoured him. But dear friends, whether or not the Lord honours us in time or what we do for the Lord is deemed to be successful, it's always right to honour the Lord. There's a day coming whenever every child of God who has put Christ first will hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful in that which was least. You've been faithful in the little things. I will make you rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. God will honour all who honour him, whether it's in time or in eternity at the judgment seat of Christ. You can never lose out whenever you put 
God first. May God help you today and encourage you today and strengthen you today. And friends, in this day of compromise and departure from the word of God, where the world is so infiltrated the church, let's get back to the grassroots issues of the word of God and let's honour God. Let's obey his commandments. Let's put him first. Obedience is not legalism, Martin Lloyd-Jones said. It is a symptom of salvation. Obedience is not legalism. It's a symptom of salvation. If you love me, keep my commandments. May God bless you and hopefully we'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.